Hey guys, so today I'm going to cover uh, how to install uh, Cycle Rocks into your environment. Um, if you've never done this, uh, typically um, it's it's kind of a personal choice for a developer to choose if they want to use Cycle Rocks or if they want to use the traditional UI of Cycle. Um, however, there are some scenarios which I will be covering in a later session, um, such as Speak that you really need to have Cycle Rocks in order to uh, take advantage of developing Speak applications. Um, and of course, I'm probably going to do a very quick intro into Speak as well, uh, because they kind of go in hand in hand. You really can't build anything for Speak without uh, using Cycle Rocks. So uh, again, I'm using my example uh, project solution that I've been using for all my other video tutorials. Um, so, as you'll notice, there's actually a Sitecore Explorer tab down here. Uh, this is where uh, Sitecore Rocks lives. Um, but to install, install that, uh, what you can do is you can go up to uh, Tools and Extensions and Updates. And if you click on this option, you'll see that uh, currently it shows installed uh, extensions or updates. Um, and you'll notice that Cycle Rocks has already been selected. But if you want to install, obviously you would go to online and then you would search the marketplace for um, Cycle Rocks. And it's really as simple as that. Um, then once you've pulled it down, installed it, it might require a restart of Visual Studio. It depends on your environment. Um, you should see this Sitecore Explorer tab, as well as a Sitecore uh, context menu up in the uh, main part of Visual Studio. Um, so if you click this, then you'll see some more options, um, as well as the Sitecore Explorer, which will show you existing connections that you have, as well as uh, allow you to create new connections just by clicking this. Um, so what I'll do is, since I haven't actually ever created a connection to this example solution that I have in place, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to click click that, um, and now you'll be presented with a bunch of options. Um, so I'm going to uh, set this up to point to my example uh, solution. So let me just pull that up. It's example-82 or hyphen 82. And I'm just going to use the username default. And uh, for my test environment, I just have the password as B, the typical site core login. Um, and in the location, I'll just have to go in and find that location where that is installed. Uh, since I'm using the site core instance manager, um, I have all my instances going into the same folder. So I'll select example and a website. It's kind of off the screen, but I'll click OK. And now um, it gives these additional options. So in order for Cycle Rocks to run, you need to have certain DLLs in your bin folder. Um, by default, obviously, those are, aren't installed. Uh, but you can actually select these options to have them installed, um, which we'll use right now when we click on Test. Um, it may take a little bit of time for this to happen. And uh, so it, said, it says the website doesn't respond. It's probably because I haven't um, refreshed this site in a while. So I'll just refresh. And it looks like it's responding, so I'm not sure why I got the error, but um, let me select Media Library. Um, so it should be responding. Um, it's also saying that uh, do you want to update the server components, which is the DLLs that I was referring to. So what you can do for that as well is just click yes. And it will tell you that it's going to copy this, this to the server. And I'll say update all. And it's basically telling you exactly what I just said. It's going to copy some assemblies or DLLs to your bin folder. So if I click OK. Um, it, I don't know why it asks you for this step again, but if, if for some reason it's, your DLLs are in a different area, you might have that, but I'll just make sure I have the website selected for the example website. And I'll just click OK. 
and then now it's going to basically handle the automation of moving those DLLs into that folder. All right, and now we get a yes, it works. So basically now it's connected to that example uh, Sitecore instance. So if I click OK, you'll now see that example 8.2 is showing up as my list of connections. Um, so now I can just uh, kind of expand that and now you'll see the kind of a typical Cycle uh, Rocks structure. It shows you your core database, your master, your web, and it shows you even um, your website files, your code files, as well as the data folders files. So as a developer, you can definitely see the advantage of this. You can actually work almost entirely inside Visual Studio uh, to do development. Um, but then again, it's, it's nice to work within the content editor, the experience editor, to really see the experience that the users that work. I mean, because keep in mind that this, when this goes to production or environment where your content editors live, um, they're not going to have access to Cycle Rock. So it's kind of nice in a way to see the experience that the, the users that use Sitecore CMS would take versus the way it would appear through the Sitecore Rocks interface. Uh, there is a lot of advantages to using Cycle Rocks, however. Um, for example, there's a lot of things that you can do that help automate some of the things that you do within the Sitecore UI. Uh, for example, you can you can auto you can uh, add a bunch of renderings or or copy things that you otherwise can't really do within within the Sitecore shell interface. So. Um, now that we have this installed, we're pretty much about done. But I, I, like I said, I wanted to kind of show a little bit about Speak um, before I go into it in a later session. Probably this weekend, I'm going to do a, a longer session on just creating an example application or an example form within Speak. Um, but all, all the Speak controls and a lot of the shell in general lives within the core database. Um, so if you're, if you're not necessarily doing speak, but you're maybe doing share UI interface implementations, you're going to be also working within the site core, um, the, the core database within site core. So, um, but speak also lives within here. A lot of it actually sits inside client. Um, and just to quickly cover these folders, um, not exactly sure what services does. I assume that's uh, something to do with uh, the component service library or the uh, data services library. Um, but the the speak area, which as the name kind of suggests, it's it's actually to do with kind of the uh, layouts, some of the main temp templates that you're going to have for your your speak application, um, things like that. So uh, in here you'll see that there's kind of some kind of high level uh, things to do with the speak application. Um, you're not going to see in here uh, renderings for the speak application directly. Like uh, if you got a text box, you're not going to see that um, or t a text field or something like that. You're not going to see that inside this uh, speak area. So that's just something to keep in mind. And, and like I said, we're going to cover this in a, in a session this weekend. Um, Next is there's kind of two areas. There's something called your apps and there's also applications. Applications basically stores all the speak applications that Sitecore has developed by default. Um, so if you've been using the Sitecore CMS uh, for very long, you'll notice that like the experience editor is in here and experience analytics and um, the launch pad, which uh, is, you know, you can actually customize the launch pad to include additional buttons and things like that fairly easily, such as here's the buttons and there's all the different um, kind of categorizations for the buttons. And then you can actually just go ahead and right click and, and add, um, add a new launch pad button. And then you can link it to anything. And it's really simple to do. Uh, that's just an example of how easy speak is to uh, make changes. Um, although there's some advanced parts to speak as well. So um, that's that. Um, so that's pretty much what is in applications. 
uh, your apps is an optional place that you could place uh, your applications that you're building yourself. Um, I tend to put all of the custom ones that we build inside applications as well. Um, so uh, for the Sitecore Hackathon, we built a bulk manager tool. Um, inside that bulk manager tool, we actually stored it within applications instead of your apps. Um, but that's really up to you um, how you want to do that. It's kind of similar to the inside the master database when you're adding templates, there is a um, user defined or user templates area um, where you could place your templates that you're adding. But I find a lot of people just create their own folder. So you, you could create, you know, instead of just applications or your apps, you could create a number folder and call it, you know, website one and website one apps or something like that um, it's it's all up to you so uh, lastly is this business component library so I found this a little confusing when I first started working on speak applications but um, this is actually where all the kind of renderings that you're going to use for your speak application the the ones that are built in by default so there's version one and version two I'm not exactly sure when version two came out, um, but version one is usually typically what I use. I think version two is fairly new, so I am typically always use it, but um, but I'll have to you know respond to that. Um, I'm going to do some research on that before I actually do that course um, this weekend to see if that, that really is true. Um, because there might be performance reasons to why version two is faster than version one, but so inside these folders is, like I said, the, the renderings that you're going to use um, for your application, at least the default ones. So, uh, for example, common. Inside common is all the buttons. You might want to place a combo box on your, on your speak application. Um, there's a bunch of things. I guess there's a sheer UI control if you want to add that in, a text area, a text box, things like that. Um, there's lists, there's navigation, um, there's resources, there's just a lot of different things that, um, that you can use within your speak application. I'm going to cover a little bit what these, these letters mean in my next session. Um, but there's, there's, it's not just a text box. There's also structural, LM, uh, renderings that you can use to make up that page. So, um, there's lists, there's tasks, there's dashboards, um, there's containers, there's rows, uh, kind of uses a bootstrap uh, kind of uh, convention. I'm also going to cover a little bit about the the, the PLID or the uh, placeholder names that it uses by default and how that kind of is structured. That's, I think, important to know. Um, and eventually I'd like to uh, you know, do a full session on Speak um, from start to finish, doing a full on application, uh, maybe describing how Bulk Manager was built, or or there's some new uh, developments I have going on with Speak that I maybe could show how those were built from start to finish. All right, that's pretty much it for this course. Um, once you get in here, you can start playing around. You can start deleting uh, your Speak applications. You can start adding ones. Um, uh, my, please look out for my next course on really the bulk introduction to Speak. Um, but if you if you have no interest in Speak and you just really wanted to learn how to do Cycle Rocks, this is a great a tutorial to just installing it and getting it going. And then you can start learning about all the automations of Cycle Rocks. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And uh, yeah, have a good one.